day, people. I'm going to do another, hopefully a lovely pour for you today. I am using my Elmer's glue um, for my pouring medium. If you a new beginner, uh, at the bottom there's a little arrow at the bottom of the video that I'm doing. If you click on that a drop down box will come and it will give my pouring medium of what I've used for this particular pour. I always make my paints up at least 24 hours before. My favourite silicone is Helmar. Only two to four drops in every uh, cup of paint that I make and I always stir in well and you find that way you hardly have any residue left over if any when you come to varnish or gloss or um, whatever you want to do to your finished product. So it's just a few tips. These were some paints that I made up some custom colours and did a video on it. So if you want to find out the custom colours of the paints that I'm going to use, they are go to the video section on my YouTube page and uh, click on videos and it'll have a drop down of all the videos that I've done and you will see recently I've done a custom paint colours. So that's basically what I'm going to use today is some of the custom paint colours that I made up previously for that particular video. So I'm going to swipe from the top down today instead of the centre and see how we go. So this was a navy that I made up. Um, and I have the recipe to my navy that I make up. It's in that particular video. So this is the navy that I've made. It isn't uh, one that I've bought. These particular paints today, I did, I'm did. i using up my what I've got left of global paints. Um, I am more swaying now towards the uh, Montmartre paints for the simple fact that because I'm doing videos for you all and there's a lot of American, USA, Canada um, viewers that they can quite easily get hold of the Montmartre paints. Montmartre Studio Acrylics at a really reasonable cost and they're really thick and creamy, they're highly pigmented and they're a really nice quality paint. So going more towards that way because then at least you can get um, the products that I'm using to get these results. So this one was another one I made up and this was a metallic, it's a gorgeous metallic blue. I haven't got a name for it, I don't think I put a name for it. But it was in those custom colours, it was another custom colour that I made up. So that is also in that particular um, video. So uh, had in that video too of making uh, metallic paints yourself, you know, some metallics. You have to obviously start with a metallic, um, but yeah. So you find that interesting if you're interested to do some of these colours that I'm using today. So the other one I did was this russet. That was another custom colour. Um, that's also in there, so putting all of these in here. Think, oh, yucky, yucky, but they will really surprise you at the end and turn out absolutely stunning. That's having confidence, isn't it? <laughs> and in fact, it looks quite nice, just as it is. So that's another one. And then I did, which is a rose gold, it's what I, was another custom colour um, that has the recipe in that particular video too. So this is the rose gold but it goes particularly nice with blues and especially that russet. It's another posh pour by the look of it. A posh pour. These are on trend colours and they're ones that really sell well for people that have earthy tones in their homes. Tones in their homes. Sounds Okay, I'm going to put a bit of gold in there. So this was just metallic gold. I didn't actually custom do anything to that. It was just a gold, metallic gold. Which the metallics done like, they often, 
it's often worth making them up thicker because they just sink to the bottom and, and disappear so okay I think I've got more than enough I'll just get I'll just put that in because I know that it will end up disappearing the gold into that okay so those were custom colors mostly that I did except the gold so give this a tilt just a gentle tilt just taking your time no hurry just relax and doing it try to always recenter your paint when you've tilted it one way re try and recenter it bring it back so you're not keeping or losing all your paint down one end actually this paint seems to have gone a little bit thinner for whatever reason because it's moving around the canvas really freely which sometimes it, you can have to give it a bit of a shake to move it on so just recentering it before I go over the other side the gold looks as though it's taking it over but it certainly won't at the end product so don't worry if you haven't covered your corners just run your fingers underneath and just finger pop what where you haven't got paint on your edges. Again, this one I've put the masking tape underneath to help um, keep the bottom nice and clean. i just gonna wash my hands off. Yeah, that's all good. That's looking good. Yeah, I have put a few videos, basically uh, tutorial videos of the last couple of days. It's not much of my paintings, but tutorial videos on um, custom paint making. I've done a test on a diff on a on an archive quality glue, and I have done um, oh varnishing and glossing. So if any of those videos appeal to you, I have them on my. YouTube page on the videos if you click on my own page and click on the videos you'll see that there's some tutorials on those things that they're just everyday things that people you know like to find how somebody else does them so I've popped some tutorial videos up there this was white and I added a bit of the russet to it because um, I didn't want it quite white so that's what I'm putting in this particular Pour. So I'm going to do this one from the very top, just pour in the eee, swipe colour. And I always like to do, if I'm going to do one uh, swipe from the top, I always like to keep the colour as well that I'm using underneath. So I don't just have a band of the colour. I don't think that looks very nice and it always sees through underneath that there's nothing actually there. So it is always nice to have a band, uh, not have the band, have some colour underneath. Going to my swipey tool, the best one you can possibly do. So yeah, that looks all good to go. So this is looking like a, a really on trend posh pour. Another posh pour. Okay. It's kind of autumny colours, isn't it? It's mostly reminds me of the autumn colours. I'm sure there's lots of other things that are going to reveal themselves under this particular pour. So just doing that um, swipe nice and slowly, wiping off your swipe tool in between each swipe. I'm not leaving myself much room here. And it doesn't matter if you miss a bit or that's taken off a bit of the paint off the edge. Okay, that's all good. That's all good. So I'm getting a little bit of bare spots there. That's because of the gold transparent seeing through it. But if you get that, just it's not to do with the actual silicon. It's to do with the paint density, whether it's transparent or um, not. <laughs> Opaque is the word, is it? I don't use the posh paint words, I just know what I like. But as you can see, that's already selling up with these gorgeous 
little cells happening here. So that actually is quite nice. I'm going to use my butane torch. If you've got the cream brulee torch, the gas one, that's absolutely fine, I believe. And I'm just gonna wave my gas torch over this one. I'm not gonna do my clusters. I'm gonna wave it over. It's kind of like a waterfall pour, isn't it really? It's got those gorgeous rich colors. So I have great hopes for what's gonna reveal under here. And I love it because the swipes always, the swipe colour always acts as a outliner for my cells. That is just gorgeous already. That is coming up absolutely beautiful. I'll try and give you a close up. Oh my goodness, that is gorgeous. Just one second. You see how gorgeous that is. And I actually may leave this one without doing any balloon kissing. The balloon kissing always does bring up some gorgeous effects in your piece. It really does because they don't actually look like a balloon has hit it if you, can, if you do it at this stage. It sort of uh, creates movement where the paint falls back into. So... Yes, that's absolutely really, really gorgeous. And I'm gonna leave it at that, can you believe it or not? <laughs> Did somebody call me not Queen of Dragons, she called me Queen of Balloons. So I'll take that crown and wear it. <laughs> so thank you to the person that made that humorous comment to me. That was wonderful. I love the Queen of Balloons, but um, that, <laughs> It is so gorgeous, the colours are so rich, beautiful, and I'm absolutely going to leave that exactly as it is. So I hope that I've inspired you in this, this pour, and if you want to have a go at making those custom colours, it was just the video one or two before this one, so just go to my YouTube channel for the Jilly, uh, Acrylic Art by Jilly Cube and just there's a little signs at the top that says videos. You just click on that and then it will just drop down all the videos that I've done. And then you'll find the one to the custom colors, which are all these colors in this particular pour. And it is beautiful, really, really beautiful. Really happy with this one. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for all the new uh, subscribers. I'm absolutely, thankful so much that I can be helping anyone. I have wonderful comments and I am so inspired by you, you lot, and so inspired to continue and try and create beautiful work and help you improve in your art. So thank you if you subscribe. That would be wonderful if you want to come over and see what other work I've done on my Acrylic Art by Jilly Cube Facebook page. I can answer lots of questions there as I don't always get to answer everybody because it just is so time consuming, but I really do try. Thank you, you guys.